Welcome to Planet Side 2 for Beginners, Cram Session, where I try to impart as much knowledge as I can to you as fast as possible. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Planet Side 2 is a massively multiplayer online first person shooter where hundreds or even thousands of players are fighting on the same map using aircraft, armor, and infantry. This is a never ending futuristic war for territory control between three empires the militaristic Terran Republic, the corporatist New Conglomerate, and the techno-religious Vanu Sovereignty. It is never-ending because in the future, there's no real death, as you can just be rebirthed into a spawn tube by the power of nanites. Please don't ask me what they do with the bodies. The war takes place on the alien planet Araxis, on which there are a number of continents. Four continents are currently available for play in Planet Side 2, with more planned in the future. Each continent is 64 square kilometers, on which there are a number of facilities to fight over. The objective is to capture as much territory as possible for your empire. Levels in Planet Side 2 are called Battle Ranks, or BR, and they're capped at 100. You gain BRs by gaining experience points, which are awarded not just for combat, but for contributing to your empire's war effort, be it reviving the fallen, repairing damaged tanks or facility equipment, or just by spotting enemies that allow someone else to kill them. In fact, the fastest experience point earners are support classes. Keep this in mind. For every 250 experience points you earn, you will be awarded a certification point, or CERT. CERTs are used to upgrade your character and vehicles with new abilities and weapons. Because of this, you will find higher BR players have an advantage over you, but do not despair. Most advantages are minor, and with a little playtime, you can get caught up quickly. That said, you will die a lot. Get used to it. Everyone dies a lot. Top players have an average life expectancy of less than 5 minutes. This is a warp gate. They are safe havens and staging areas. Each of the three empires has one on each continental map. They are the only territories which cannot be entered by opposing empires. In the warp gate you will find a number of terminals that allow you to do various things. There are vehicle terminals for spawning ground and air assets, equipment terminals for changing your class or loadout, and continent terminals for switching continents or accessing the VR training grounds. You can access them by walking up and hitting the E key. I highly recommend checking out VR training as you can test every weapon and vehicle in the game even if you have inserted it. It's great for knowing what to buy next. This is your shields and health. Every class has 500 health and 500 shields, except infiltrators, which have 400 shields. Your shields will regenerate after a few seconds of not taking damage. Your health will not, unless your empire controls a biolab facility on the continent. More on this later. There are six infantry classes in Planet Side 2. The infiltrator can cloak, use sniper rifles, hack terminals and turrets, and use recon spotters to show enemies on the minimap. The light assault has access to jump jets and smoke and flash grenades. The combat medic can heal and revive teammates and can use assault rifles. The engineer can repair vehicles, base defenses and maxes, as well as place turrets and ammo boxes to resupply teammates. The heavy assault has an overshield, access to light machine guns and rocket launchers. And finally, the mechanized armor exosuit, or max, which can deal a lot of damage and take it too as they have 2000 health. Further. Maxes have two weapons, one on each hand, which can be anti-infantry, anti-vehicle, or anti-aircraft. They are treated more like vehicles than infantry, as they have armor, not health, which is repairable by an engineer, but they can be revived by a medic. There are many infantry weapons, most of them are empire-specific, meaning only one faction can access them. However, there are some weapons branded by the fictional company Nanite Systems, which makes the NS series of firearms that are common pool accessible by all. I'm not going to go in depth on each weapon type, just know that most are designed to be side grades, not upgrades, and the starting weapons are very good, and in some cases best in class. Most vehicles are common pool, with the exception of Empire specific fighter aircraft, or ESFs, and main battle tanks, or MBTs. Spawning vehicles, maxes, or consumables like grenades cost nanites. Everyone has a maximum of 750 nanites and are given 50 nanites every minute. This limits the amount of vehicles, grenades, or maxes one person can spawn in any given time period without having to wait for their nanites to replenish. You can see your session stats, including nanites and nanite timer, by holding the tab key. Experience in nanite gains can be increased by buying a boost in the depot or becoming an SOE All Access subscriber. This is a Sunderer. It is the most important vehicle in the game, and as such, the only one I'm going to highlight. 
The reason why it is so important is because not only is it a 12-person troop transport, it can be deployed as an advanced mobile station or AMS, which makes it a spawn point. Spawn points are essential for both attacking and defending, because people die a lot. They need a way to get back into the battle, and if you don't have a spawn point close to a fight, you will lose the fight from attrition alone. Spawning from one or multiple sunders is the preferred way to attack a base. As such, if you are defending a base, the best way to cut off your enemy's supply of fresh troops is to destroy their sunderers. If you are attacking a base, you want to defend your sunderers. There are two other ways for attackers to spawn in troops. Spawn beacons, which are placed by squad leaders, and galaxy dropships, which squad members can spawn into and drop unharmed into a base. Enemy spawns are top priority targets. This is the Continental Map. It is the most important informational tool in the game. Accessed by hitting the M key, it shows you who owns what territory, what territory is linked to what other territory, where the fighting is, and by how many people. The lines on the map are called the Continental Lattice. Each line is a lattice link. You can only capture enemy bases that your empire has an uncontested territory link to. This means your empire's base must be fully secured before you can move on to the next one. Using the map lets you decide ahead of time where to go and fight. Active engagements will show up as explosions on the map, and you can ballpark the size of a battle and the number of each side's forces by the information on the map. Hovering your mouse over a facility's hex will show you approximate force numbers, including percentage breakdown, on the right side of the screen. Unless you have a huge force at your disposal, look for fights that are relatively 50-50 population-wise. Usually your squad leader will decide where the squad goes, more on squads later. This is a capture point. All bases depending on size have between 1 and 4, labeled by letters. These capture points can be contested by an opposing faction by having their infantry stand near them to flip them. Maxes and vehicles cannot flip capture points. In order to be able to flip a base's capture points, your empire must own territory linked by the lattice to that base, and it must not be contested itself. If your faction flips the majority of the capture points in an enemy base, you will start the capture timer. The more points you have flipped, the faster the capture timer will count down. If the capture timer reaches zero, your empire will gain control of the facility. Beware, the defenders can flip capture points back and move the capture timer in their favor, and the base will be considered fully defended if the capture timer ticks all the way back up. There are currently three major facilities in Planetside 2, and each of them grants bonuses to your empire. This is an amp station. It allows you to use base defense turrets longer without overheating. This is a tech plant. Owning one of these allows your empire to spawn main battle tanks from facilities other than the warp gate. This is a biolab. It will regenerate the health of hurt infantry over time. The other bases are called outposts, and they are varied in shape and size. This is a generator. Generators power shields. These shields can be anti-vehicle gate shields or anti-infantry shields protecting a capture point or a spawn control unit known as an SCU. Enemies can overload generators by walking up to them and holding the E key for a short time. This starts a timer that once reaches zero, destroys the generator, and takes down the shield it powers. Don't waste your ammunition or explosives on them, as they won't do any good. Tech plants and amp stations generally have horizontal and vertical shields that prevent attackers from gaining access to the inside of the facility. The generators and biolabs power shields protecting the SCU. SCU shields and amp stations and tech plants come down when the capture timer reaches a certain point. SCUs can be overloaded like generators, and if destroyed, the defenders can't spawn at the facility. Normally, only major facilities have SCUs, but there are exceptions. Bases can be taken without destroying SCUs, but it makes them much easier to take if the defenders can't respawn. Any infantry class except Maxes can disarm an overloaded generator or SCU by walking up to it and holding E, but an engineer is required to repair a destroyed generator or SCU. As Planetside 2 is an MMO, it is a social game best played with other people. It is often said that teamwork is overpowered. While sometimes you may want to lone wolf, playing in a squad can be much more rewarding. Squads can have up to 12 people, with 4 squads making up a platoon of 48. There are usually public squads one can join, and you can see which ones are available by hitting the P key. If you're not particular, you can hit the insert key to auto-join a squad, but I wouldn't recommend it. Your squad mates will show up on your map, and you can click the squad deploy button to get close to your squad leader quickly. Helping your squad mates will give you experience bonuses over and above that which you would normally earn. The squad leader will usually indicate where your squad is needed by placing a waypoint, this green arrow thing here. If your squad is part of a platoon, then your platoon leader can also place waypoints. 
You can also place your own personal waypoint by right clicking on the map and your personal waypoint will always be white while the others will be the color of the squad. Remember squad beacons? Squad leaders who have asserted them can place beacons which allow their members to spawn in drop pods from the sky. Place them in a good position though, because they're easily destroyed. Planetside 2's version of guilds are called Outfits, and I would highly recommend joining one. Most are beginner friendly and have no problems getting the fresh meat up to speed. It's also nice to know that you have a group of people to fight with when you don't want to take a chance on a random squad. You can find them using the in-game Outfit browser by hitting O, or better yet, check the Outfit recruitment forum on the Planetside 2 website. Well, that's the end of our Planet Side 2 cram session. I hope it was informative, and if you have any other questions, click here to check out the Planet Side 2 subreddit and look for a thread called Ask or Axis. Lots of veterans frequent Reddit and are willing to answer more in-depth questions there. This has been a No-Nonsense Gamers production. Happy hunting.